Anna here. Welcome to my channel all about finding joy while learning to live well with autoimmune disease. I'm so glad to have you here. So today I'm going to be talking about weight loss um, and about why I don't weigh myself and about kind of my story with weight loss, with autoimmunity, with Hashimoto's. Um, and this all kind of stemmed from a question I received on Instagram uh, a couple days ago, a DM that I received, and it was such a good question. And it's something that's kind of been on my radar that I wanted to share with you guys. So here's the question. I do have a question for you. I am finally, all caps, finally feeling a lot better, but have gained about 15 pounds and would like to lose it without totally setting off flare symptoms. Do you have any suggestions or tips? I do. Um, first of all, congratulations on finally feeling better. I am so happy for you. All right, so I'm just kind of getting comfy here. I wanted to share my story, my history with weight loss and Hashimoto's. Um, and then I'm going to come back around and answer your question with tips and suggestions from my point of view. I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's in January 2018 after over a decade long of health struggles. If you want to read more about my Hashimoto story, I will put a link down below where I share all about it. Um, as far as my weight, I noticed, so I have two kids, um, 12 and 14, and I noticed after my 12 year old was born, um, that's when a lot of my health challenges started popping up and um, I, I lost the weight, but then I started gaining it, gaining some of it back. And I went through a number of years where I held on to an extra 10 or 15 pounds. And I wasn't, I wasn't like heavy or obese or anything like that. It was only 10 or 15 pounds and I'd go see the doctor, but it, it was like a gradual thing. And it was like one of those things where I knew something wasn't right. Like I knew, I mean, I, I wasn't the great with my eating, but I knew I was doing enough where I shouldn't have been gaining the weight and I was exercising a lot. Like it just didn't add up. And, um, and so I went, I would go to the doctor, you know, all these times where I'd be like, something's wrong. I'm having these symptoms. And one of the symptoms I was, I'd tell him is like, I'm holding on to extra weight. I've gained extra weight. And he'd look at me like, really, like you're fine. Like, and it, it, it annoyed me because I wasn't complaining about the extra weight so much as something's off, even though the weight did bother me. Um, and during this time, so for most of my life, I, so I'm 38 right now, for most of my life up until two years ago, I weighed myself every, I, I feel sorry for myself that I did this. Um, I weighed myself every day or I went through like one period of time where I would change it to every week, like once a week. Um, I was very much obsessed with the number on the scale and I wanted to get to this one number. And I knew if I could just get to this one number on the scale, then like, I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. And then like, I'd be happy. I, I know it sounds crazy, but um, I was just really into, I wanted this one number on the scale and I worked out intensely and um, I would never see that number. And I had a trainer at one point and I would never see that number. It's sad because my weight would fluctuate, like like our weight fluctuates from day to day, um, from month to month, like certain times of the month, we retain more water than other times as women, like our weight just fluctuates, like it's natural, it's totally, um, I mean, it doesn't fluctuate like a ton, but you know, a few pounds. And I was, when I would weigh myself every day, in the morning without clothes on, like so I'd weigh the least amount I possibly could, you know, I'd hop on that scale and that number on the scale determined how I felt for the rest of the day for a period of time. And that's to me, like, I feel so sorry for that version of me. Like I, I feel so sorry that I was like that because I was letting that steal my joy. And really I gave my scale way too much power. And if I was up a pound or two, I would be like, oh gosh, dang, you know, or if I was down a pound, I'd be like, and like really and so um fast forward to my rock bottom um towards at the end of 2017 i was at a point where i was barely functioning i pushed my body pushed my body pushed my body pushed my body and my body said no enough my body was like do not pass go do not collect 200 dollars like i'm done you know and so um i got to a point where i could no longer exercise for the first time in a long time and I freaked out. I was like, I'm going to gain weight. I'm going to gain even more weight. I'm, you know, I'm carrying this extra 10 or 15 pounds. Now I'm going to gain extra weight. And, but my body, like I literally couldn't do, I, I couldn't do it anymore. Um, I was getting worse. And um, after, I was getting no answers for years from a doctor. So I went to, in desperation, I went to a natural path. Um, and it was expensive. And, you know, in my book, it was expensive. But I was, like I said, I was, I needed I needed some help and I needed to figure out what was wrong. And um, I remember the naturopath telling me I needed to rest. 
and I remember it was within the period of a month where I learned about, you know, digestive issues I was having, um, other health issues I was having, and then I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's. And during this time, I stopped, you know, working out completely, and I, I was scared, and I had to realize that um, I remember coming to a point where I thought, I feel so bad, I just care about getting healthy. Like, I, all I care about is getting my life back. All I care about is feeling better. All I care about is being able to do the things that I can no longer do as a wife, as a woman, as a mother. Um, it was a really, really hard time in my life. And I remember coming well, to a point where I'm like, okay, I just have to be okay with whatever happens with my weight. You know, like as much as I've cared about my weight all of these years, I have to stop weighing myself and stop caring about that number on the scale. It's hold, you know, it's held way too much power over me. Um, I and I had to come to a point where I was willing to gain weight in order to feel better. Like if that's what my body needed, I was willing to let that happen. Um, if I could just feel better, you know, coming to the realization that my health mattered more to me than how much I weighed and that I was willing to weigh any amount if I could just feel better, if I could just be, feel healthy and get my life back. You know, that was a big realization for me. That was, uh, that was huge. So I found the autoimmune protocol, the AIP days within my Hashimoto's diagnosis and I started it. And by this time I hadn't been weighing myself for a few weeks already. And I had just been trying to make like small changes and then I adopted AIP. And I remember, I'm laughing because I remember being like, what am I going to eat? How am I gonna do this? Like, I don't even feel well, how am I gonna cook? Like, I don't know if I can do this. Um, I was, I loved cheat days. I was addicted to sugar. Um, and so it was hard, but so I started AIP again because I was desperate. Like again, like I realized that nothing tastes as good as the, you know, like being able to do things and being able to function and being able to enjoy time with my husband and with my kids. Like I realized that that's way more important to me than what anything tastes like. I actually felt worse before I felt better on the AIP. Um, it was uh, in the first the days were very, very hard. I think my body was just getting adjusted to eating so cleanly and to um, not eating sugar of any kind. And so it was just a big change. Um, but within within a couple of weeks, I was feeling better. And within that month, I was feeling drastically better. Like I, I could not believe it. Um, I remember my doctor telling me that um, there's no proof that diet has an impact on Hashimoto's and I'm proof it does. And I know a lot of people now who are living proof that what we put into our bodies, how we treat our bodies has a huge impact on autoimmune health and on um, finding a relief from autoimmune symptoms. And so I'm so grateful for that. But back to the weight loss thing. So ironically, um, w w within weeks of starting AIP, um, I was not weighing myself, but the the weight just like was like falling off. Like I could tell I was just losing weight and my clothes were loose and my husband was like, whoa. So even though I knew I was losing weight, I still didn't step on back on the scale because it had been a couple months since I had weighed myself. I would broken that habit of stepping on the scale every day. I'd broken that habit of caring so much about what I weighed. And ironically, even though I wasn't exercising, um, I the weight just came off of me. And I'm not sure if that, you know, I've heard that that happens with some people who start um, eating very cleanly, who start AIP. I don't know that that happens with everybody. I will say that I did not, like I ate clean, clean, clean AIP. Like I didn't eat, I didn't know there was like AIP treats or snacks. And so I just ate like very, very clean AIP. And um, the only reason why I know how much weight I lost is because I, I would get weight at my doctor's appointments. And so I do look at the scale at my doctor's appointments. I lost that 10 pounds so fast in the beginning that, and I don't know if it was over one month or two months, I did not keep a great journal or hardly any journal at this time. And so I don't, the time, you know, it's been a couple years and the time frame's kind of like, you know, kind of fuzzy in my mind. But um, I will say I dropped it fast enough that I was concerned that, but I, even though I was feeling so much better, um, I was concerned that I was gonna keep losing that weight and, and be underweight. And so um, I did start weighing myself, I think once a month, maybe once, every two weeks, I can't remember, just to make sure my weight wasn't getting too 
too low. And I had read that when you start AIP that it's not unusual if you drop weight in the beginning and then your weight levels out even though you don't change how you're eating. And I was kind of like, well, how is that even possible? I don't get it. And that's what happened for me is I, I dropped weight and then my weight, apparently I got to the weight where I needed to be at. My body got to a weight where it just, I felt great physically too. Like I just knew that, you know, I'm at a weight now where I just feel great. Like it feels right. Well, before I always kind of felt like, oh, I'm gaining, you know, like I'm holding on to an extra 10 or 15 pounds. It just didn't feel as comfortable. I feel very comfortable in my body. I feel very and you can be comfortable in your body at a heavier weight too. Everybody's body needs to be at a different weight. Just because my body feels great at this weight doesn't mean your body feels great at the same weight my body does. Um, and I would like to think that if I had gained an extra 10 pounds instead of lost that 10 pounds, I'd like to think that if that's the weight that my body would be at, that I would be happy at that weight too, that I feel comfortable at that weight too. Um, but that wasn't my experience. I will say that within a few months, once my weight stabilized, I did stop weighing myself completely again. And I only get weighed now at my doctor's appointments. So I go to the doctor um, as needed. I don't go very often anymore. I do go in for my, you know, endocrinologist appointments for, you know, my testing. And so I'll get weighed there and I look at the scale and I just kind of see, oh, you know, I've gained a few pounds. That's fine. I still feel good. I still feel great. And I have gained a few pounds back, but again, I feel great. And, and I only know that because I do get weighed at doctor's appointments. Um, we do have a scale. The only thing that we use it for is, um, weighing our bags, our suitcases before we go on vacation, <laughs> make sure we're under that 50 pound. I am an overpacker. That's a whole nother video though. So as far as back to um, the question, do I have any suggestions or tips? Yes, I do. My first one, um, my biggest one is to stop worrying about the number on the scale, is to worry more about how you feel and your health and being healthy and eating and living and thinking in a way that supports your health, doing everything that you can to support your health and not worrying about that number on the scale. With that said, um, I do understand that there are medical conditions that causes um, us to gain weight. And it is important to be mindful of those things. As I said, um, Hashimoto's is one of, you know, Hashimoto's hypothyroidism is one of those health um, conditions that does cause weight gain, that does cause, um, you know, holding on to excess weight. And so it's really important that you do work with your medical team to get your labs done, to support your health um, in any way that you need to as far as medicine. I was at a point when I was diagnosed that my thyroid levels were not at a point where I needed any medicine, which was so shocking to me because I went in there and at this point I was barely functioning and I'm like, really, there's nothing you can give me to help me feel better. And there was really no advice for how to make my symptoms improve my symptoms. It was just kind of like, well, you know, well, your thyroid's going to be getting worse. Just kind of live with it until you need some medicine. But I mean, I know people who are on medicine for thyroid um, conditions who do still have the excess weight gain, who do still have symptoms that are really, really tough. And so um, even if you are on a medicine for your thyroid, I do encourage you to still address nutrition, mindset, lifestyle factors, because those are still gonna help your symptoms. However, I highly encourage you if you are currently on any kind of thyroid medicine or um, that you do if you are making big nutrition or lifestyle changes that you do work closely with your endocrinologist and with your medical team so that they can monitor your labs to make any adjustments in your medicine that you may need. Okay, so another tip that I have is to, I know that when we have excess weight that we're holding on to that we would like to lose, it can be very, very tempting. And I was guilty of this to exercise more, exercise more. Like if I could just out exercise these pounds, um, but I would encourage you to be mindful of exercise intolerance. Um, that's something that I've struggled with. I had never heard of it. I had no idea. It was not even on my radar. Um, but basically in my case, what it looks like is um, I was over exercising and it was making me, my symptoms worse. And so when I stopped exercising, <clears throat> I actually felt better. However, I was very, very, very sick. So I'm not saying stop exercising at all. 
um, unless you're very, very, very sick like I was. Um, but I would say just be mindful of the types of movement and the types of exercise that you do do. So um, I was, I loved like working out with a trainer, like high intensity workouts. Like my husband does CrossFit. I'd, you know, do a few CrossFit workouts here and there. I, I've done marathons. I've done mud runs. Like I was very into like, you know, like super intense. And um, after my rock bottom, as I started feeling better, um, it took me a long time to build back up my strength to even walk around the block. Um, I so so walking's great movement, even if you're um, really not feeling well. Um, I I started walking once. I mean, I'd say within a couple of weeks <clears throat> of when I was at my very worst and you just start slow and you don't judge yourself like i went from doing all of those crazy workouts to struggling to walk the quarter mile around our block and needing to rest and on top of that one time i i literally only walked half of that quarter of a mile or however long it was sat on the curb and had to have my husband come pick me up like to go from this intense crazy workouts to like can't even hardly walk around the block was all kinds of hard and if you're going through that I feel you this is a whole nother video too that I'll have to go into but I just want you to be mindful of the type of movement that you're doing um it's been a couple years I've been building back up my strength and building back up my um everything I do and um I've gotten so far I I can walk for miles I love to snowboard I can snowboard again um I've learned to love yoga <laughs> um just because you try something new and you don't love it at first, give it time. You, you can develop a love for it. So I love restorative yoga and different kinds of yoga. Pilates is something new that I've been able to start doing, which I love. Um, I have not tried, every time I try weightlifting and higher work, you know, higher in, um, intensity workouts, it does flare my symptoms. Um, I usually get a low grade fever that day and some of my other symptoms. So just, and I'm not saying that just because this is happening to me, it's happening you know, it's going to happen for you. Everybody's different. I know people um, with autoimmune um, conditions who can exercise intensely without any problems. So just, it's just a matter of being in tune with your body, um, with what, you know, with how you feel and connecting all the dots. Like, okay, I worked out really hard and then I had a flare. Okay. That flare may not have been caused by something that you ate. It may have been caused by the workout. So it's just a matter of, and that just takes time to like sort all these things out. Um, when you're at the beginning of your autoimmune wellness journey. And so just, you know, be patient and give it time. Um, you can get exercise back in your, in your life if you're struggling with exercise intolerance the way that I have. You can just start small and don't, don't compare who you are now to who you used to be. This is the beginning of a new journey um, and it's going to be beautiful and it can be beautiful and it can be very joyful. Um, it's going to be frustrating at times. It's going to be heartbreaking at times. It's what what we're living with is hard what we're going through is hard um, and that's okay we can go through hard things we can we're strong enough for this we're strong enough to figure this out another tip i have is to think about like if you're struggling with well i can't stop weighing on myself i need to know what that number is on the scale i would encourage you to think about why why do you need to know that is it because your doctors told you that you need to be mindful of how much you're weighing in order to track your health like then that's okay you don't need to weigh yourself every day just weigh yourself every so often to keep track of your health journey um, for medical reasons um, however if you are just weighing yourself because you're obsessed with that number on the scale I would encourage you to ask yourself some questions ask yourself um, what's gonna change by knowing what that number is we can only do what we can do. Are you eating the healthiest that you can? Are you doing the best that you can to support your health through lifestyle? Are you managing stress? Um, I mean, stress has a big impact on our weight too. Are you sleeping? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you getting a good quality of sleep? Um, are you moving in a way that feels right for your body? Are you getting out in nature? Are you connecting with your loved ones? Um, all of these things matter. Are you, you know, how's, you know, how's your mindset? Are you, are you mourning and grieving over the life that you used to have and the life that you lost because of your disease? Don't push that aside. I was there too. I went through a grieving process and a mourning process and it's not fun. Um, 
give yourself time and love and just know that it's okay to feel those feelings. It's okay to have those thoughts, but let's not sit in them for too long. Let's turn it around and ask, okay, why is this happening for me, not to me? This is not happening to me. I'm not a victim. This is my life. I can choose joy no matter how my body feels. I can choose to be positive and to, you know, have a growth mindset. Think of this big obstacle of, you know, living with autoimmunity as I can learn from this. I can grow from this. I can allow this to make me a better person. I can be the best version of myself. Yeah, we may have this huge mountain in front of us that we don't know how to climb, that we did not think we were ever going to be faced with, that we, well, that we don't know if we can get up. But we can, and we can become stronger for that climb. We can get to the top of that mountain and enjoy a view so beautiful. We so if you find yourself facing this huge mountain and you feel lonely and depressed and scared and anxious and all the things, please know that you're not alone. But don't, don't let that stop you from trying to climb that mountain. You just keep putting one foot in front of the other. You do the best that you can. You take it as slow as you need to. And don't compare your mountain or your climb to my mountain or my climb or to someone else's mountain and their climb. Because the truth is, is that we all have trials. We all have our own mountains. Our mountains look differently. Even if we both have Hashimoto's, our mountains look differently. Our climbs are going to look differently. My climb is going to look differently well, than yours. There's no two climbs that are the same. So I just encourage you to be kind to yourself to love yourself, to allow yourself to feel all those feels, but then to get to work, to, well, to start climbing your mountain. Go as slow as you need to, go as fast as you want to. Um, and just, I promise you that you're gonna fall back down sometimes. I fall back down sometimes. Just get yourself back up and keep climbing. It's okay. Forgive yourself for falling. We all fall, it's okay. So as I, as I think about weight loss, think about that, that part of it, um, I think our society and I think we as women especially put way too much emphasis on weight loss, put way too much, um, we give way too much power to the scale. We give way too much power to that number on the scale. Say enough. Today it stops here. I'm not going to worry about that number on the scale. I'm not going to worry about what I weigh. I'm not going to worry about what my body looks like. I'm going to worry about how I feel inside. I'm going to worry about supporting my health and living a healthy life. Ironically, that's when I dropped the weight that I had been holding onto for years. And I'm not sure what's going to happen with your journey, but I encourage you to love yourself through it and to be willing to accept your journey with open arms. And um, we are not defined by our weight. We are not defined by the number on the scale. And I just want you to know that I love you, that I support you, and that I'm here if you have any questions at all, if you need any help at all. Um, I share what I share. I create the videos I create, the articles on my website. I do it out of love and um, because I know that this is hard. And I, I, I know that there are women today who are going through what I went through and it's lonely and it's difficult. And I want you to know that I've got your back that I'm your friend and that I'm here for you. So please email me, comment, reach out to me anytime if you need some extra love, support, and if you have any questions at all. all right, so this video got a little heavy. It is what it is. Um, hopefully it was helpful. Um, I do publish new videos every week, so hit subscribe if you don't wanna miss any. I have a weekly newsletter where I, shoot, where I share exclusive tips. So if you wanna sign up for that, I will share that down below. I hope you guys have an amazing week.